Pedigree is the name of the book, How Elite Students Get Elite Jobs. Northwestern University Professor Lauren Rivera is the author. Professor Rivera, how do you define elite? It's an excellent question. I think it depends who you ask. So I've been looking at elite jobs in terms of investment banking, management consulting firms, and law firms. And these are in many ways the business, the, um, I call them the baby business elite. Um, they are very, very prestigious positions, also those that involve high levels of economic re rewards in terms of salaries. There are other types of elites. There are cultural elites, there are media elites, but um, I'm really looking at business elites. So these are just the people who are in the most prestigious and rewarding segments. Does elite beget elite? I think it does, for better or for worse. Why? Um, I think that there are some conscious processes at play. A lot of it is unconscious, too. I think that we as humans naturally gravitate towards people who are similar to ourselves. And when it comes to elites, whether they're economic elites or cultural elites, there are certain ways of being, carrying yourself, educational tracks, and so forth. Um, that are more common among people in a certain, certain social strata, and we come to believe that that's the best one, and that's what people who have merit, um, what they, the types of paths they pursue. So it reminds me of the psychological research that shows that when you ask someone what kind of driver is a good driver, or what kind of parent is a good parent, they'll describe someone exactly like themselves. And I think that there's something going on there in terms of when you ask people who are in positions of power in society, um, what merit is, they'll give it a definition that is strikingly similar to um, whatever they are. It's true in other segments of society as well. We have these similar to me type biases, but it's definitely one thing that contributes. All right, walk us through a case study of how an elite student gets an elite job. Yes, so in general, the types of um, occupations that I'm studying, getting an entry level job straight out of undergrad, straight out of business school or law school, in an elite professional service firm, so top management consulting firm, top investment bank, top law school. The biggest key is to go to the right schools. These firms have a very, very strict view that the best and the brightest only go to top schools, and they have a very definition, a narrow definition of what a top school is. So as a sociologist, I might think a top 50 school is an elite school or a selective school. That's not what the, the game is here. The game here is to be at a top five, top 10 university. Um, so that's the first key. The second is that you need to have the right resume to get in the door. For undergraduates, this is the most fuzzy because a lot of undergraduates don't have a lot of work experience. They may have one or two internships under their belt, but the more prestigious the internship, the better. Um, these employers often aren't necessarily looking for having concrete skills in a given domain. If you go to Princeton, if you go to Harvard, if you go to Columbia, they trust that you're smart enough to do the job <coughs> and they can teach you whatever you want have to learn. So they look for internships, um, often that are unpaid. That's one of the class dimensions of this, um, as well as extracurricular profiles that are filled with activities that are motivated by personal passion, things like sports. Um, depending on the uh, person who screens your resume, um, drama can be a good one. If you happen to have an athlete screening a resume and you're heavily involved in drama, you may be out of luck. <laughs> but this idea that um, people, who, the best and the brightest, cultivate their, their skills, their intellect, not only in the classroom but outside of it is huge. So if you don't have extracurricular activities that are intense uh, and are motivated by passion, you're out of the game. That's getting into the interview room. Do you want me to continue? Um, so if you're selected to interview, a lot of the interviews are open-ended, so the interviewer will sit down just like we did and in, have an open-ended conversation for the first five or so minutes. Why are you here? What do you like to do in your spare time? And a feeling of personal chemistry, often based on similarity in, things, in terms of things that are outside of work, outside of school, are a huge source of interview success. Um, after that, um, some firms will in, have some sort of skills test in consulting, it's the most structured. You do what's called a case interview, and I can tell you more about that if you're interested. But the idea is you're supposed to um, speak to your interviewer in a way where you are equals um, throughout the interview. You're supposed to foster a feeling of chemistry. And all of these things, success, is partly dependent upon having a baseline familiarity with upper middle class and upper class culture.